We're looking at an attic red figure helix or drinking cup dated to 440 to 430 BC, found in Italy and attributed to a painter known as the Codros painter. To my right, we've got an image here of an oracular consultation. And to my left, we've got the outside of the cup where we have a scene of Peleus hunting a stag and also the Caledonian boar hunt. But it's the image on the right, the inside, the tondo of the Kelix that we're concerned with for our topic of Greek religion. Now, the scene itself actually shows King Aegeus of Athens, so Theseus's father, who has come to consult Themis, the goddess of law and order, about the birth of his son, Theseus. Now, Themis was a titan goddess. She was daughter of Gaia, Mother Earth, and it was Gaia who was the original inhabitant of the Panhellenic sanctuary of Delphi before Apollo took over. And she had the gift of prophecy, hence why she's being consulted here. It's also Themis that traditionally gave mankind their divine laws and orders. So things like hospitality, piety, um, the right to have assemblies, and also um, giving offerings to the gods. And it's the Greek word Themis that is used to talk about divine law and order, as opposed to nomos, which is more about man-made laws. Now, Themis here is represented in the guise of the Pythia at Delphi. So it's also a particularly useful artifact for us trying to get a glimpse of what it was like to consult the oracle at Delphi. The evidence is fairly narrow on this, so we have to be careful, but there are a few things that we can deduce from looking at this particular image. First of all, we know that the oracle at Delphi was a woman, a priestess, and that might seem a very basic thing to point out, but not all oracles had this method of consultation. They were very varied. For example, at Dodona in northern Greece, you would get your answer from listening to the rustling of the oak leaves or from studying the flight of birds, in that case, the doves. There were also dice oracles and divination by lots, where you asked a question, picked out a particular colour, and that would correlate with a yes-no answer. So it is significant that at Delphi, you've got a priestess, a woman, sat in front of you giving a verbal response. And that response was usually rather ambiguous, something that the person asking the question had to go away and interpret for themselves. Hence, the very important maxim above the entrance to the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, know thyself. We can also tell from looking at this, or at least get an indication that the consultation took place indoors, because we can see there's a roof, there's a column holding that up. And from the temple plan of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, there is a very a private room towards the back of the temple known as the Aditon, where she may have sat. And we can see her sitting here on a tripod. She's also holding the sacred laurel of Apollo and a thiali, or an offering bowl. So that we know that there were payments, for example, that had to be made in order to make a consultation. And the Pythia at Delphi gave her prophecies in a trance-like state. Uh, we now know that Delphi is on a fault line. There are gases that are kind of emanating from those lines, which is probably why she was in that trance-like state when she was giving her prophecies. Now, it's worth me pointing out that the Pythia at Delphi was not available all year round. For a start, Apollo was only present at Delphi for nine out of the 12 months of the year. For the other three months, Dionysus was meant to take residence there. On top of that, the Pythia was only consulted on the seventh day of each month. That was Apollo's sacred day. So there were only a total of nine days in the whole year that you could consult the Pythia at Delphi. So there was more limited access to this oracle than at oracles elsewhere in the Greek world. Uh, on top of that, you have to take into consideration that certain people might have 
Chromantia or the right to consult the oracle first. So, for example, the Chians, the people from Chios, had the right to consult her first because they had dedicated an altar to Apollo opposite and outside the temple. In terms of the types of questions people asked, well, our archaeological evidence points to mostly religious questions. So, for example, about changes to religious practices, sometimes about the foundation of colonies. But of course, famously in literature as well, we get consultations made by city-states about military decisions. So in Herodotus book seven, for example, this is where we get the famous oracles to the Athenians and to the Spartans, the Athenians being told to put their faith in their wooden walls and the Spartans being told that either their city will be sacked or a king from the line of Heracles must die. So in summary, whilst this might be King Aegeus of Athens consulting Themis over the birth of Theseus. The fact that it represents Themis as the Pythia at Delphi means it can go some way to helping us try and recreate what an oracular consultation at that important Greek sanctuary might have been like.